Hey guys, I'm Hop for TFB TV. I'm out at the range today with the brand new Ruger PC Charger. People have been asking for a pistol variant of the PC carbine for a while now, and Ruger has delivered. So let's take a look at it. The Ruger PC Charger is a pistol variant of the Ruger PC Carbine, much like the original Charger is a pistol variant of the 1022. All of these guns share similar DNA, similar operating principles, and similar controls. Like the Carbine variant of the Ruger PC, the PC Charger is a simple blowback 9mm that can swap between two different magwells, one compatible with Ruger SR9 and Security 9 magazines, and the other compatible with Glock magazines. The PC Charger has the same quick-remove barrel mechanism as the carbine and a heavy-profile 6.5-inch barrel with an M-Lock handguard. From there on back, the PC Charger is essentially the same as the tactical version of the carbine. The receiver is nestled in a glass-nylon-reinforced polymer chassis with an AR-style grip and a 1913 rail section at the back for mounting folding pistol braces. The handguard has M-Lock slots at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock positions for accessories, and Ruger ships the PC Charger with a UTG Pro M-Lock handstop pre-installed. The barrel is threaded half by 28 for suppressors or other muzzle devices and comes with a thread protector from the factory. The gun ships with the Ruger SR9 compatible magwell installed, and included in the box is a 17-round SR9 magazine, as well as the magwell adapter to convert it over to Glock magazines. Obviously, I installed that one right away because I'm a paid Glock shill. The most immediately noticeable thing about the PC Charger is that it's heavy. The chassis is thick and adds weight to the existing weight of the receiver, and the heavy barrel and bulky takedown mechanism definitely contribute to that. The PC Charger doesn't ship with a brace or an optic, and comes in at 5 pounds, 5 ounces with an unloaded SR9 magazine. I added the SB Tactical FS1913 polymer folding brace to the charger, which brought the weight up to 6 pounds even. Add a red dot to that and you're looking at a couple more ounces still. The full-size PC carbine by comparison is 6.8 pounds with a real stock, iron sights, and a 16-inch barrel. The weight of the PC charger is pretty far forward owing to the heavy and bulky chassis and barrel takedown. The way the M-Lock handguard interfaces with the takedown mechanism and the barrel means there's a lot of extra material in there, and the barrel profile is chunky as well. There is a version of the FS1913 brace that is made of aluminum instead of polymer, and it's 3 ounces heavier. That might help balance things out better and may come in handy for other reasons, which we'll get to later. The PC Charger has no provision for sights, only a Picatinny rail on the top for mounting optics. I mounted up a Bushnell TRS-26 to test with. Enough talk, let's have at it. The Ruger PC Charger is a straight blowback 9mm and it feels like it. If you expect something like this to be softer shooting than an AR, the recoil will come as a surprise. Most pistol caliber carbines have a very high recoiling mass, and you're pushing a bullet that weighs twice as much as 223 on the low end. It's not unpleasant, but it pushes you around a bit. I could say the same thing about the Beretta CX4 Storm, but that has the benefit of a stock with a real cheek weld. The trigger on the PC Charger is good, it feels just like the 1022 trigger because it pretty much is a 1022 trigger. A bit of take up and a light break. The reset is audible and tactile. I ran a few hundred rounds of 115 and 124 grain ball ammo through the Charger using OEM Glock 17 mags, Magpul 17 and 21 round mags, and an extended ETS fun stick. Reliability with Glock mags and Magpul Glock mags was flawless. Reliability with ETS extendos was not so good. In my experience, those mags don't work so great with Glocks either, so I'm not counting that against the Charger. Hey, do you guys know ETS mags fucking suck? They do now. They do. Does that work? Buy the no. one. The charger works fine and shoots as well as can be expected for the type. The only problems with the PC charger are largely ergonomic problems, just like on the full-size PC carbine, compounded by the small size of the charger. 
For example, where do you put your support hand? You have a few options. I guess there's a couple ways you could try to shoot one of these things if you didn't have the brace. So it looks like from the position of the hand stop, the sort of expectation is that you have your hand like this, which uh, if you try to actually get behind the dot with your hand like that, maybe if you've got shorter arms, you can pull it off. If I try to do that, I'm basically breaking my wrist. If I span the hand stop with my fingers like this, the hand stop recoils into my knuckle. doesn't feel great, but it actually works pretty well. The other option is maybe to give yourself a nice one finger wrap around of that, that little stub. That's less comfortable and less stable. The controls on the charger are not the most graceful. The magazine release is reversible, but it's not accessible from a firing grip, and there is no bolt release button, so reloading is a bit clumsy. I did a quick and dirty comparison to my CX-4 Storm, and the Beretta is noticeably smoother to get into action. I don't think fast reloads are a critical feature of a gun like this, but it's worth pointing it out. Additionally, if you're left-handed, the crossbolt safety is going to be a little slow to disengage. The same can be said for the Beretta CX-4 as well. An AR-9 can neatly sidestep all these handling problems and has the added benefit of working just like your rifle caliber ARs. So if these features are a deal breaker for you, you might want to look into an AR-9. If you're right-handed, swapping the bolt handle from the right side to the left will make reloading easier. However, if you do that, the bolt handle will interfere with a folding brace and prevent you from firing it with the brace folded. I like being able to have the bolt handle on the left side of the CX-4 Storm or my Taurus CT9 carbine, but I was able to live with it on the right side while shooting the charger. I did have an issue with the FS-1913 brace where it would jump the detent under recoil and wobble around or collapse. Oh, that's epic. Yep. I think the problem here is that the recoil of a blowback 9mm is too much for the brace locking mechanism. The aluminum version of the FS1913 might not have this problem since it probably won't flex as much under recoil. Interesting technique. That's not the charger's fault, but it's something to keep in mind since there aren't a ton of 1913 rail attached braces on the market. One more thing to keep in mind with the charger is that pesky takedown mechanism. If it was up to me, they would just get rid of it. I can see the utility. If you have a suppressor and a folding brace attached to the charger, the takedown mechanism would allow you to break the gun down into two approximately equal parts for transport in a backpack or something. I can see the appeal, but I'm not really that interested in the charger as a backpack gun. The downsides of the takedown mechanism are, in my mind, significant. For one, it adds a ton of weight and bulk to the gun. The way the handguard attaches to the barrel requires a lot of material, and compounded with the heavy, bulky chassis, it makes the charger into something of a pig. The other issue is that the optics rail is on the receiver. When you disassemble and reassemble the charger, you risk losing the zero with your optic. And unlike the original PC carbine that has iron sights on the barrel itself, you have nothing to fall back on. The takedown mechanism is extremely robust, but it's still a concern. The PC charger also exhibits an issue I had when trying to shoot groups out of my old 1022 charger takedown. The barrel is not free-floated, so if you rest the forend on something, you can get a significant point of impact shift. Bottom right hand here, this is with the gun rested on the chassis. Bottom left is with the gun rested on the handstop. At 25 yards, the Charger exhibited approximately a 1-inch point of impact shift when shot from a rest. Again, I think this is worth pointing out, but it's not really a deal breaker because it's really not what the gun is for. So what is it for? I can't give the Charger a recommendation until we figure out what role it's supposed to fill first. Is it a backpack gun? With the folding brace and no suppressor, you could stuff it in a backpack, then pull it out and be ready to rock and roll on short notice. Is that a very realistic use case? No, I guess not. The charger could be back up for a Security 9, SR9, or a 9mm Glock. That kind of turns it into a truck gun, though, and I'm not wild about the concept. For use as a competition gun, that might be the ticket. I think that's what Luke is going to do with his. 
I definitely wouldn't want to try to compete using the folding brace though. Maybe home defense with a suppressor, a good solid brace, M-lock attached weapon light, and a red dot. Ah, there it is. The takedown mechanism doesn't really add much to this equation, but otherwise it all checks out. The Charger shoots as well as any other gun of the type, maybe slightly better thanks to Ruger's fancy tungsten weight setup in the bolt. It's also reliable and plenty accurate for such a small gun. I can definitely recommend it if you can find a use for it, and yes, fun counts. But I can't help compare it to the CX-4 Storm. My CX-4 is configured with a red dot and comes in at 6 pounds, 3 ounces, virtually the same weight as a PC Charger with folding brace and red dot. For that same weight, I've got an extra 10 inches of barrel, better controls, built-in iron sights, and a real stock. Unless I really, really need to be able to stuff a gun into a backpack, I'm probably going to stick with the CX-4. Thanks for watching, guys. TFB TV is supported by our sponsors Ventura Munitions and Top Gun Supply. Please check them out. We'd appreciate it. So would they. If you want to support us directly, you can join our Subscribestar or Patreon. Links to both of those are in the video description, and James runs cool giveaways and stuff for our supporters. We've also got a Discord server linked in the description below. Join up if you want to chat with some smart people about guns, or anime, or whatever it is you weirdos are into these days. Alright, see you on the next one. Oh,